Hello, welcome, welcome back to Extraterrestrial Resources. Today, part uh, two, and we are going to talk about the distribution of elements in the solar system. Understanding how the chemical elements are distributed in the solar system and within uh, its uh, celestial objects means we have to understand how the solar system formed, how the chemical elements combine from isolated atoms into compounds like molecules, minerals and alloys, and eventually how the planets and other uh, objects form. And that is what we call the planetary differentiation. So at the beginning, we have the cloud. The, system, the solar system formed from the gravitational uh, collapse of a giant uh, cloud of interstellar uh, gas, mostly formed uh, by uh, hydrogen, but all the other uh, elements of the uh, periodic uh, table were already there because formed by the activity of uh, long dead uh, stars and supernovas. So this is basically what you uh, could see. And then this giant cloud starts to rotate and at the center the uh, the pressure is very strong the temperature is really high and at some point it collapses and we start a new star so at the center we have the sun and all the remaining matter here forms what we call a protoplanetary uh, disk. And all this matter will eventually condensate to form the planets and the other objects in the solar system. So we uh, believe that all the planets and all the objects form more or less simultaneously. That means that all the, the planets uh, of the solar system are uh, related. Then the third uh, step is the condensation sequence. That means that all the atoms will eventually form more complex compounds. And that happens when the temperature of the protoplanetary disk uh, drops, it drops from the center to the edge of the disk. And then the elements will start forming these compounds according to their chemical characteristics and according to the distance from the center to the edge of the disk. And this is what the, this condensation sequence looks like. Basically, we start with a high temperature above uh, 2000 kelvins and down to 140 kelvins. So the first element to uh, condensate at a temperature between 1850 uh, um, to 1400 uh, kelvins are the refractory elements. Among these elements, we have the platinum group elements or PGE. We have like uh, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum. We can find also rare earth elements like uh, lanthanum, cerium, neodymium, dysprosium, ytterbium, lutetium. There is also among the refractory elements zirconium, hafnium, ytterbium, molybdenum, tungsten, thorium, uranium. And then we start forming also 
uh, aluminium, calcium, titanium oxides like corundum, spinel, and perovskite. And this mineral contains also niobium and rare earth elements. As the temperature drops around 1400 to 1250 kelvins, we have condensation of the moderately refractory elements that includes uh, magnesium and iron silicates like olivine containing also manganese, cobalt and nickel. We have also formation of pyroxenes uh, containing chromium, vanadium and scandium. When the temperature reaches about 1250 to 650 kelvins, we have formation condensation of the moderately volatile elements. We have formation of uh, silicates like uh, plagioclase that contains uh, sodium, strontium, and barium. We have formation of potassium feldspar that contains potassium and uh, rubidium and we have formation of sulfides. And sulfides uh, contain uh, zinc, lead, and of course, sulfur. Below 650 kelvins, we have condensation of uh, volatile elements. We have formation of uh, hydrated silicates like micas, they contain lithium and cesium, and we have formation of um, nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen compounds. The leftovers of this condensation sequence are the gases. They, in fact, do not condensate. They stay as uh, molecules or atoms. And uh, that includes uh, hydrogen, neon, and helium. Finally, below 140 kelvins, we have formation of ice minerals like nitric uh, acid, uh, ice, we have water ice, and methane uh, ice. And with this uh, condensation sequence in mind, we can basically understand how the elements are distributed within the solar system. So we can divide all the objects in the solar system in two groups of uh, planets. We have an inner group of small planets. They are formed by the refractory and moderately volatile elements. They are formed by metal and silicates, and they are the rocky planets. And then away from this group of rocky planets. Here we have the giant gas planets. They are formed by uh, uh, hydrogen and helium. That's Jupiter and Saturn. And further away, we have the frozen uh, planets made out of ice, Uranus and Neptune. We have also two uh, asteroid belts, the asteroid belts here and the Kuiper belt here. I will talk about that a bit later. So now we have to form the uh, planets. How we do that? The step one is what we call planetary accretion. Because we have condensated many elements, they start to form bigger and bigger particles. And they uh, form eventually big objects like this one we call planetesimals. So you see, 120 kilometers across.
cross that sort of big object. And at the beginning, we have a lot of uh, collisions between the objects, but as they start to get bigger and bigger, the probability to have an encounter between those big objects is lower, so we uh, have less collisions, but they are getting very, very energetic. And then we have a second sequence of uh, objects uh, formation. We start with planetesimals, and then we start, we have bigger objects that are planetary embryos, and then eventually we have planets. Then there is a second step, which is the planetary scale melting. That is most relevant for rocky planets. Because we have a lot of collisions, they are very energetic, we have a lot of heat, and we start accumulated, accumulating within these objects a lot of radioactive elements. Eventually, we have a large scale melting of the body, and we have a planetary scale magma ocean. And once we have that, the elements start to migrate according to their density within the uh, planetary uh, body. That is the planetary differentiation. Eventually, we get the denser elements in the center of the planetary bodies. So we have iron nickel alloys in the center forming, forming the core of the planetary bodies and silicates forming mantle and crust. And this is what we uh, see for rocky planets. That is based on Earth model. So we have an inner core made out of uh, nickel and uh, iron alloys. Then surrounding this inner core, we have an outer core which is formed by nickel, nickel, iron, and sulfur alloys. We have some impurities as well, like silicon and oxygen. Then around this outer core, we have a mantle formed by manganese, um, magnesium and iron silicates, that is olivine, pyroxene, also calcium, titanium, um, aluminium oxides like spinel and pyroxide, and eventually the outer uh, skin of the, the planet is formed by potassium, sodium, aluminium, and calcium silicates like uh, feldspar and mica. And this uh, layered structure is dictated by density. So this layered structure determines the distribution of elements within the, uh, the planets, mostly uh, the rocky planets. So we can distinguish the four uh, types of elements, atmophile elements, they are basically gases, they are in the atmosphere, lithophile elements, they are in the crust and the mantle, they are mostly silicate phases, silicate minerals, calcophile uh, elements, they have an affinity with sulfur, they are in the core of the rocky planets, and finally, 
siderophile elements. They don't combine, they are isolated metals and they are also in the core. And here on this uh, table, you, you see the distribution of uh, most of the elements of the periodic table according to this classification. Iron is siderophile. We have all the uh, platinum group elements. Uh, calcophile, we have lead, uh, we have also uh, silver, zinc, lithophile elements, most of the elements we can find in uh, silicates on earth, sodium, potassium, aluminium, silicon of course, and at atmophile elements, they are the gases, nitrogen, oxygen, a bit of uh, uh, helium and uh, uh, rare gases. This classification is not perfect, otherwise all the siderophile and calcophile elements would be uh, in the core and we couldn't find them uh, in the crust, but we find, uh, for example, uh, copper, gold and iron in the crust. And that will be it for this second part.